Nucleophilic substitution is widely used in organic synthesis. We use it to make molecules because it transforms one functional group that might be pretty easy to make into other functional groups that aren't so easy to make. Here's a general overview of the idea. Carbon, four things attached. With something on it we call a leaving group. I want to emphasize that that guy is sp3. However it happens, and we'll be talking about that, Treatment of a molecule like this with a nucleophile. And we know nucleophiles have a pair of electrons that they can share to make a bond. There's our new bond, plus the leaving group. The things that can vary are the structure of the organic compound itself, what's attached to carbon, the leaving group, what it is, and the nucleophile. There's a wide range of nucleophiles that are possible. We'll talk about the changes in all of these things and what that means. But for now, let me just say that the leaving group will either be something that becomes negatively charged as a pair of electrons goes with the leaving group. Here they are. Or be something that's positively charged. I'm going to be very specific here. OH2+. Plus. So when those electrons in the sigma bond are broken to go with the leaving group, a neutral molecule is made. In any case, these things must be reasonably stable which means a lot of things that we could think of as Y minus with a pair of electrons won't be good leaving groups. Hydroxide, for example, awful leaving group. The candidates that usually are leaving groups are a halide, chloride, bromide, or iodide, or something called a sulfonate. And in every case, these guys stabilize a negative charge really well, so they make good leaving groups. And water, of course, is neutral, so it makes a good leaving group. The nucleophile must have a pair of electrons to share, often has a negative charge, but doesn't necessarily have a negative charge. If this guy doesn't have a negative charge, it probably is something that has a proton attached. It can be lost. So, as examples of negatively charged nucleophiles, halides, cyanide, hydroxide, alkoxide, which is almost the same thing, the sulfur equivalents, of a partial list that are common ones, and of the nucleophiles that have a proton that can be lost, water, alcohols, and nitrogen compounds called amines that have a hydrogen attached directly to the nitrogen, and two other things are all common. So you see the variety, and you see the principle. Something that's a leaving group that can disappear with a pair of electrons to make something stable, is replaced with a nucleophile, something that has a pair of electrons, to share to make a new bond. And this would be a set of compounds that fits. There are two key ways that this can happen. A molecule with a leaving group can react with a nucleophile, where that nucleophile is donating a pair of electrons and forming a bond at the same time as the leaving group is leaving. Everything happens at once. This is a one-step reaction. Because all the bond making and bond breaking is happening simultaneously, we call it a concerted reaction. And this type of reaction mechanism, the careful description of how this reaction takes place, the reaction mechanism, this type of reaction mechanism is called SN2. That seems odd, doesn't it? It's a one-step reaction. It's called SN2. That's because there are two reaction participants in this step. Let's look at the other possibility. In some cases, the leaving group is good enough and the structure uh, supports the carbocation well enough so that the leaving group simply departs. So it forms an intermediate carbocation. And in a second step, the nucleophile forms a new bond. And if we say that this nucleophile is negatively charged, it's just a little bit easier to write out the mechanism. The leaving group leaves, makes a carbocation intermediate, the nucleophile adds. Here's the new bond. So it's a two-step reaction, and it's called SN1. And it's called SN1 because in this step, which is the slow step, there's only one reactant. Nothing else is participating. And so there you have it, an overview of the SN1 and SN2 types of reactions for substitution, where good leaving groups are replaced by good nucleophiles. There's a limited set of leaving groups that are commonly used, and there's a wide variety of nucleophiles that are commonly used. So 
several different functional groups can be introduced through the use of nucleophilic substitution. Because this is so widely applied, it's important to understand these two reaction mechanisms that will tell us what our opportunities for use and what our limitations for use are. And so we'll discuss in detail the SN1 reaction and the SN2 reaction.